Greetings. Sorry I couldn't be there in person, but it's time to have a frank conversation about LIS education. The problems with how we prepare librarians are often phrased as a gap between theory and practice. The argument goes that library schools are not producing graduates with real-world practical skills, instead focusing on generalities and theory. This is an old and perennial argument, and if there was a library school in ancient Greece, I'm sure its Dewey Socratic equivalent would be criticizing for talking about scrolls in the abstract and not concentrating on tablets. This theory versus practice gap, however, is not the real problem. The real problem is that no one knows what a new librarian needs in their second year, much less their 25th. There is no common entry point because there are fewer and fewer commonalities between libraries. As libraries of all types are organizing themselves around local needs and a local community, be it a town or a university or a school or a hospital, the differences in working environments for new librarians is changing not only very quickly, but diversely. What once was applying a standard set of reference skills to the databases a library owned, or cataloging skills to any lo local workflow or new codes, is now about community outreach librarians, knowing the unique culture of a city, or a user experience librarian learning the realities of undergraduates at a particular school at a particular time. The libraries that we hold out as global exemplars like Doc One in Aarhus or Local in Tilburg or the San Giorgio Public Library in Pistoia or the libraries at the University of Michigan or there at the Vatican Library with its petabyte data center digitizing global collections, well, these exemplars are diverse as they are impressive. No one school can prepare all starting librarians for all libraries. This doesn't even consider the inclusion of archives, special collections, and research services that are not even connected to traditional library institutions. The standards and competencies that we develop will continue to become more general and more focused on lifelong learning and less specific and less on skills because the communities are becoming more and more specific. Where once we could define cataloging skills down to the very standard, we now must recognize that information organization can take the form of MARC or RDA or Ferber or Delvin Core, just general concepts of the semantic web. Theories of classification still apply and still must be taught, but the specific skills that accompany these topics are now purely illustrations where once we taught reference as a series of genres like atlases and encyclopedias. Today, we teach learning theory and pedagogy. Now, these are important areas to teach, but they'll never meet the standard of first year practical skill. Before I jump into thoughts on addressing the situation, let me say that these are really good problems to have. The reason is there's no the reason there's no one canon of skills is that librarianship is vital and dynamic. The reason there's so much diversity in the field in terms of the communities we serve and practices is because the need for librarianship is growing and the communities we seek to serve are becoming more diverse and varied because we are at least attempting to go beyond real barriers of class and race even though we don't often succeed. If all we were doing was preparing a set of spare parts for a handful of libraries that hadn't changed in decades, our beautiful, stable, and satisfying curriculum would be the surest sign of the impending death of libraries. No, the answer is not to try to develop a single standard for all, but to create continuous systems of learning that are agile, connected, and embedded. The library of education of tomorrow, and increasingly of today, must smash the divide between the real world and the academic. It must also break the idea that one degree at the outset of a career is sufficient preparation for an entire lifetime of serving communities. Lastly, it must also fully embrace 
that we are preparing librarians, not library workers, and accept that librarians are not neutral and must develop skills that are as much about resilience and self-examination as they are about cataloging and how to run an organization. Let me take these ideas in turn, and I'll begin with agility. What is an agile system for library education? It's one that is constantly seeking out not only best practices in librarianship, but innovative ones. It develops a curriculum and the means of delivering that curriculum that are flexible and can be deployed very quickly. One example of this was in Norway, where the Department of Archivistics, Library, and Information Science holds a biannual conference for its alumni and other librarians of the nation. It's not only a chance to bring the best and brightest thinking from across the field together, but to connect and listen to graduates and find out what they need in their curriculum and in their ongoing development. Here at the University of South Carolina, we are pairing every library science degree with a specialized certificate that documents areas of focus such as data science, health information, and so on. However, we have structured the certificate so that the specialties can change from year to year, even semester to semester. We see students getting certificates in artificial intelligence and librarianship, library construction and design, and even service to refugee populations. The list of specialties will be long and will continuously change from student to student, situation to situation, as the world changes that these librarians seek to serve. Which brings me to my second new standard for library science education, embedded. I would love to say my faculty, many are sitting in your audience, represented hundreds of specialists, all experts in the latest development in the field. They do not. They are scholars with specialties and a broad view of the field with an ability to connect practice with larger concepts. However, our alumni and the institutions they work for and that we partner with do represent hundreds of specialists developing and deploying innovative services in communities across the globe. Library schools must be part of creating a network of libraries directly engaged in the education of new librarians. This goes well beyond a set of adjuncts who teach a few classes or internships or field trips. We must develop a network of libraries that share both the responsibilities of education and the funding of such systems. The Library School of Tomorrow is truly a hub that delivers a core of library concepts and research skills and then connects students with developing innovations in that field. Your faculty may be on the tenure track or working the reference desk. Your mentor may have the title of professor, or librarian, or archivist, or programmer. The hub that is the library school ensures rigor in the learning, but more importantly, ensures cohesion in the student's degree. The dynamism in the library profession can be clearly seen in the enormous offerings of professional development. A librarian could spend an entire week 24 hours a day, sitting in webinars and online workshops in just about any aspects of the library profession. Our library associations, our vendors, our universities, our publishers, our libraries are in the midst of an amazing creative rush of developing online education. However, there are no real attempts to coordinate and link all of these together into a coherent understanding of the field. Faculty in the library school of the future will spend as much, if not more time, evaluating portfolios of these diverse online resources as they do teaching classes. The days when the expertise of a field was contained within a single library school are gone. The days when the totality of library expertise could be represented in a single faculty are gone. We must look to other models of how we prepare professionals. That network of libraries and expertise we build must also be seen as places of residencies where we embed students for direct contextualized learning. The advent of online education 
has made place irrelevant for many of our programs. You no longer have to move to Columbia to get our degree. However, in making this shift, we have also lost the power of place. We must now join that power of place with the flexibility of online. Students will no longer move to Columbia because that's where the faculty are. They'll move to Aarhus and The Hague and Taiwan and Charleston because that's where innovative practices are being formed. Taking a page from the medical residents, we are turning our network of partners into residency opportunities for students. Libraries can use these residencies to attract the best new librarians to job openings. And the students gain authentic, specialized knowledge on top of the core that we provide. And hosting these residencies is an opportunity to expand the learning of the students to the learning of the whole organization. In Charleston, South Carolina, about two hours from here, the local school district is paying for 10 in-classroom teachers, English and math teachers, to get their master's degree and become school librarians. The funds for these cohorts are then directly reinvested into the school district. The tuition of the, that the students pay, they, that turns into national speakers, on-site workshops, even open course developments that are provided not just to those students, but the entire district. This creates a sustainable means of continuous library education well beyond the granting of a degree. By enrolling 10 teachers, the district enrolls the whole district in library school. And what are these students learning in their residencies and in this network? They're learning to be librarians, not people who work in a library, but a set of values, research skills, and a mission they will take to their jobs in libraries, or the technology sector, or the banking sector, or government. They will be going into these libraries and businesses and governments with a point of view. They are not neutral deployers of skills. They are professionals on a quest to improve communities through learning. They will go not as parts of a system, but as advocates for inclusion, privacy, access, and openness. In order to prepare these librarians, we must develop a curriculum of self-reflection and analysis. We must address in the curriculum self-care, vocational awe, resiliency, and self-awareness. These are not soft skills, but techniques that allow our librarians to access, engage, and adapt to community needs and realities. It is no longer acceptable that we send librarians into communities prepared to answer reference questions, but unable to process the poverty they may find there. It is no longer acceptable to train academic librarians to recognize gaps in a collection, but not to recognize student homelessness. It is no longer acceptable to train archivists who do not understand the politics inherent in controlling the memory of a community. Analysis cannot be limited to the individual or simply introspection, however. Methods of analysis, of research, are necessary. No matter the environment our new librarians find themselves in, they will need to know how to understand a community, how to assess services, how to collect, analyze, and protect data. Participation is a goal, and we shall never know how well we're matching that goal without instruction in research methods. Instruction that is embedded in real communities with real questions and contextualized methodologies. And so there are my new metrics for evaluating the effectiveness of a library science program. Agility. What ongoing methods are in place to identify, evaluate, and prepare students for developments in a rapidly changing profession? Connectedness. Who are the partners networked with the program and its faculty to ensure direct connection of the classroom to the field? Embeddedness. What are the program's ability to deliver authentic 
authentic field experiences to students that allow them to contextualize theory and research and methodologies. Resiliency. How prepared are librarians to face, understand, and that is analyze, and solve the problems in a community in line with professional mission and values? Today, the librarians we prepare are building makerspaces. They're crunching masses of data in civic redevelopment projects. They're saving tweets for posterity and housing masses of research data. Our graduates are delivering knowledge and food to rural communities left behind in an information economy. They are supporting the research of Nobel laureates and citizen scientists fighting for clean drinking water. They are fighting for access to the world's knowledge in developing economies, and they seek to bring dignity to marginalized communities. These folks, our graduates, need a strong platform to prepare them for this work and then support them throughout the life of that work. Library science programs can be the foundation, but not alone. We must connect the innovative librarian stifled in a bureaucratic library with an innovative librarian revolutionizing a small town a continent away. And we need to connect both of them to scholars and the means for continuous learning. Library schools are a vital part of the reinvigorated library profession. Yet, just as we have seen the road to success for libraries is in adapting to and including the community, so too must our schools become open platforms, orchestrating participation and adapting to the community of our alumni. Thank you very much.